Hello, everyone. This is Scott Burke from the from Imagine. It's now um, 2 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and start today's um, presentation. So again, brief introduction. My name is Scott Burke. I'm the AEC Cloud Solutions um, Program Manager for Imagine. So I help our teams and work with our clients with the BIM 360 solutions offered by Autodesk. And the solution that we're going to be talking about today in that portfolio of BIM 360 is BIM 360 Design which is basically the authoring and collaboration detailing part of the project the design phase. So in this diagram that I have up on the page first here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of overall structure of the BIM 360 platform, of which all of that is built on, as you can see in the bottom of the diagram, which is Autodesk Forge, which is a open web-based programming language that Autodesk has developed so that all these products can not only talk to each other as a single silo of data, but because it's an open API, it's very easy to create other outside applications that can leverage the data within the system, thus sharing that data with other systems that may not be necessarily the type of software that Autodesk would create, but maybe you need to integrate this data into some of your financial tracking and bidding tools and things like that. So this is providing not only a tool to use or work internally with collaboration. It's also meant so that you can collaborate with outside products and partners and such as required. So again, the first thing we're talking about here, again, is or the thing I'm talking about in this environment here, this presentation course, is BIM 360 design. But I also, again, want to just talk about where some of the other tools um, fit in. This is not all the BIM 360 tools, but the primary ones. So we have BIM 360 docs, which is the foundation. So anyone who has any access to any of the BIM 360 tools will have with that access also docs. And you can also just buy access to docs as needed. And then on top of BIM 360 docs would be the design product, the glue product, um, and build or in the field. So they're all going to be leveraging and having access to docs but then they have their own suite of tools depending on what your process is or what your role is or where you fit into, into the life cycle of the process here. So typically, of course, design is going to really be in that pre-construction. And then, of course, when the building starts being built, then we start getting into the construction execution and even commissioning and handover. And docs really spans all of those, whereas design is really that first part Glue is really about the pre-construction and the construction execution, clash coordination and such. And then BIM 360 build is really about the construct, construction process itself and manage the building. And then even handing that building over for commissioning and um, running of the building later on in a, a facilities management role. So again, this is kind of a quick graphic of kind of how all the solutions fit. As you can see here, they're all built on top of an overall administration platform that administers all of the tools. And then we have BIM 360 Docs, which is the document management component. And then, of course, what we're going to be focusing on today is BIM 360 Design. So let me close down the PowerPoint because I prefer not to have a lot of those. I much prefer to work in the software. So the first thing I need to do is I would, of course, log in to my BIM 360 environment here. So when I'm logged in, I'm taken to my project management area, my document management area of docs. And right here, I can switch to any other project or company that I'm working with here. So I've selected this project I created for demonstration purposes, just called Food Mart Incorporated. And I'm looking at two folder structures in here first. So right now we are in the document management or BIM 360 docs portion of BIM 360. And in this case, this is where you have to start. This is where you create your projects at minimum. This is where you're creating your master data repository, regardless as to what module you're going to be using. So the first part here, in which is more of a docs explanation, is that we have plans and project files. These are two hard-coded parts of the system. These cannot be changed. So the plans folder is essentially where you're going to be putting your official documents. So the building is completed, we're constructing it, we're building it, we've issued it for permit, any of those types of things is exactly what it sounds. 
these are the plans would go into this location. These are your documents in the field. This is what we're going to be building the building from. Whereas project files is all the supporting documentation and or documents and plans and models that are currently active and being worked on. Within each of these areas here, these two areas, plans and project files, you can create any folder structures you want with as many subfolders as needed. It's completely up to you. You can mimic the way that you're working on your own network. That's fine. You can place any file type up here. Certain file types are directly viewable, where other file types are just strictly acts as a storage location. So if I upload a Word file or an Excel document here, I can share that with anyone that I've invited or as part of the team. They just can't view it in this environment, but they can download it, edit it, and upload it, and it will be versioned and tracked. Now, other formats, of which there are 40 different formats that this software will view directly. For instance, if I'm a user and I don't own AutoCAD, I don't own Revit, and I even get a MicroStation file, I could actually upload it into this environment and view it. So I have the access to all these different design formats without knowing anything about the software. All I need is access to this web portal. So I no longer need any separately loaded applications on my computer for viewing any of these file types. I now actually have the ability to view Revit outside of the Revit environment. Even if I was just using it in demo mode, I don't even have to do that anymore. So in this case, I've created a number of folders that are relevant to this particular project. I even have a bidding folder here project photos, maybe a specification folder here, and so on. And one thing I want to talk about briefly before I get into the full design side of things is on the bids here, I just want to talk about just permissions. So when you create your, your folder structures here, I'm the owner and the project administrator, so of course I have full control, but I can control access to this in many different ways. So I could say that anyone at a particular company, so I'll go ABC here and I'll select ABC Structural. So anyone at this company, this is a bidding folder, so they're going to have an upload only ability. So now anyone that I add to this project from ABC Structural, when they open the project, they'll see a bidding folder, but they'll only be able to upload files in it and they will not be able to see or view any other files that are in there. So I could have all my bidders involved invited to this one folder and they would not be able to see each other's folders if you want to get you know files or whatever they've uploaded so in this case i brought this in as a company i can bring someone in as just a user so i can say you know sam right here as a particular person and i'll add them to this as well so now this person here has basically upload access only or I could even say, well, but anyone that's a project manager, which would generally just be people in my team, would have view, upload, and even edit rights, and I'll add those in. So when we're looking at the docs environment here, we're now looking at the three different ways that we can control access to a project. So we have user control. I can control access via a company. I can control access via someone's role on the project. What's their function? BIM manager, project manager, project engineer, IT, owner, whatever. So these are just different ways that I can control access to this particular folder. And that would be with any folder in this environment. As I expand this, I have another folder here that I've created for my project design models. So all my work in progress is going to be in this folder. And this is the folder that I've shared with my architectural team, my MEP team, and my structural team. So I've created folders for each of those teams. So now that those folders are created, I want to now go ahead and create my teams, my teams that I'm going to be working in the BIM 360 design environment. So when I go up to my module selector here, I'm going to go as a project admin, so I'm an administrator for the project, and I'm going to establish now my teams. So right here on my design collaboration option over here, I can now go in and I've established three teams. So I just hit added team here and it says when you add a team, you then can specify here which folder that team is going to store their files in. And then once that's teams created, I would go to each of the teams and manage the team members. 
So in this case here, I can go in and I am the only member of this team because I'm taking the role as the of the architect. Whereas if I go over to the MEP team and manage these team members here, I can set this so that the only the MEP company is available to be part of this team. So as I add members from and from MEP installers incorporated to this project, they are automatically added to a team member because I've controlled access to this via a company, not just a user. Or you could just use very specific users if that's what you wanted to do. So for each of these teams, I've added the appropriate users and created a storage folder. So now that that's done, in many respects, I would almost never really have to come back into this environment if I'm just going to strictly work in Revit and not care about any of the other utilities that I'm going to show you here. So, but I've done the minimum. I've created a project, I've invited people to the project, and I've created my design teams and I've added people to those teams. So now in the Revit environment here, if I'm in this case logged in as the MEP engineer, and I have my background file here, and I need to start working on the project. The architect said they have a 50% submission that I want to use. So before I can do that here, and before I can link the file in, let me just go back to the web portal here, and let's like take a look at my team page. So I'll go to design collaboration, and look at my team page here. So let me just change my team view here so I can do that view as the MEP engineer. Here we go. So the MEP engineer would, would come to their page and they would initially see this and they see that the last time they published a file, it was their own 50% for review. Or maybe they haven't published anything yet. So let's open up the team view here. So now I can look at the submissions or the submission packages from all the different teams. So I can see right here that the architect actually has one submission here, two submissions here that are really close together, and another submission over here. And as I place my mouth, mouse over these um, submissions, or packages as they're called here, in these swim lanes, then I can see what that package is. This is 100% review. If I click and zoom in on the time frame of this, which is within a single day, as you can see, there was a 75% submission, and then a day later, there was actually an 80% submission. And then I can expand the viewing again to the entire length of the project, and then see that there is a 50% submission here. Great. So as the engineer, I would select that, and I've already done it here, but I, there would be a consume button much like this. So it looked just like that, consume. So with this right over here, I went and I consumed it. And before I even consumed it, if I wanted to, if I'm looking at this package, I can see, oh, there's a set that they've included. Let's take a look and see what that set is. Okay, so I can see that they've included at least for reviewing purposes, the first floor, the third floor, the fifth, and the sixth. So these are just the reviewing purposes. The whole model is there. This is just what they're going to allow for redlining and markups and such. So I can look at my elevations, my sections, whatever I need in that regard. This is what the architect has submitted to me as ready for me to review. Great. That looks good. I, I will accept it. I consume it. So as soon as I consume it, it gets thrown into my consume folder, which is the folder within my own um, working directory. So now I'm going to start working because the architect has given their first submission and, get, and has given me a base plan as an MEP engineer for me to start doing my work. So I've opened up my MEP template, and I need to store my project now in the cloud. So again, I would go over to collaboration here. I would select collaborate. I would go down here, and instead of collaborating normally within my network, I would simply say, I want to collaborate in BIM 360. As the MEP engineer, I've been invited into the architect's project. So there's the architect I'm working with, and here is the project that I have been invited into. And I'll initiate or go into that project now. Oh, and, and the only two folders that I see are shared one and my MEP team. So I go into my MEP team folder, go into consumed, go into the architectural team folder, and that's where I want to initiate my plan. Or, no, actually, sorry, wrong place. I actually want to go to the MEP one, sorry. So I want to go to my MEP team folder and initiate 
my plan. I'm, I'm storing it in the cloud here into my workspace that the architect is essentially assigned to me. So it's uploading the file, turning on um, work sharing, uploading the model to the cloud, and then, of course, saving to my local cache. Now, with the BIM 360 design environment, there is no longer really a central file. There is no longer a local file. It's nothing that you have to manage. It's all managed completely transparently by the system. You simply log on and open the file as if you were opening a central file. You don't even have to think about um, a local file versus a uh, central anymore. So once everything has been kind of turned on and initiated and saved into the cloud here, I just can literally start working. I don't have to get out and go to my central file or think of any of those things anymore. So now, of course, before I can start working, what do I need to do? I need to log um, link in the architect background file, and I've consumed it. So when I go to my insert command here and link Revit, instead of going to you know, a folder structure on my network, I'm going to hit external reference here, BIM 360, go into the project, go into my MEP team folder. Remember that I consumed it, so I'll go into my consume folder, architectural team, and there it is. This is the model that the architect has released to the team. It's not the live model. The architect's still working on that, but they released a model for me to use. So I'm linked to this model every time they upload a model. I can choose to consume it, and then it will update this model automatically. So now I can open up my architectural background. It'll bring in that background, and of course, I can start doing my MEP design work right now with my team. So in many respects, the workflow is actually greatly simplified here. There's even less to do in this environment when it comes to this managing your central, local, and so on. I just start working. So there's my architectural background. I set up my lighting, my MEP views, my power views, whatever, to whatever I need, and I can start working. So again, I can switch to my lighting view and start putting in lighting in or whatever else I basically need to do, my mechanical views and such. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of this file for the moment. And I'll just synchronize with Central. Again, looks all, all the same, except it's just storing that model in the cloud instead. And there is a local cache file, but it's not a local file. It's a bunch of cache files the system simply manages on its own. So you still can save locally and not publish to the main model. And then when you are, just as normal, you would save the central. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sign out as the MEP engineer, and I'm going to sign in now as the architect. And when you sign in, of course, it changes your Revit ID to you, so that Revit ID identifies yourself there. Now I can go ahead and hit open. I hit BIM 360 here, go into my company's hub, go into the project that I'm currently working on right now, go into my project files, and go to where I'm storing my model. So there's my architectural folder, and there's my file. And I just open it. Notice that there is no detach from central. There is no create new local. I simply open the file. Again, all the central and local stuff is simply managed by the system. Don't even have to think about it anymore. So if anything, I've actually removed things that I have to do in Revit by itself internally, and now I don't even have to deal with those. So now I've even simplified my working even more. So now I'm just working on the cloud. I can be anywhere. I could be at home. I could be at the office. I could be in Starbucks, McDonald's, anywhere. As long as that internet connection is consistent and strong, I'm going to get very good performance and be able to work from pretty much anywhere. So now I'm simply working on the model, and I do the same thing. I see here when I go back to my team space as the architect that I see that the MEP team has released a 50% review and so I can also consume that and then link that into my file, again, from my consume folder. So that's essentially what this tool is for, is allowing us to, the architect, to only share models that they're ready to share with the team. But the team member has a choice. Do they want to upload right here the 50% or do they want to upload the 75% or the 100%? 
So their background is not going to change. Even though the architect has made available to me four different packages, a 50, a 75, an 80, and a 100% package, I only want to use the 50% because tomorrow my 50% review is done. Day after tomorrow, I'll go in and accept the 75% completion because my next package that I have to you know, send out to the team is going to be based on the 75% completion. So again, this gives a really nice control to everyone. The architect can only share models that they want to share with the team. And same with the other team members. They're only sharing the models with the other teams when they're ready to share the model. But it's still in one cohesive collaborative environment. And then the other control is that even though a model is available, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to consume it right away and have your background update when you're not ready for it to update. So you have full, everyone has essentially the full control here, yet it's all fully coordinated. So let's say I finished my 50% submission, submitted that, and I'm going to start working on my 75% submission. So I'll come in here and see that here's the 75% submission that the architect has released to me. So I can say, hmm, I should probably, before I consume this, let's, let me explore it a little bit. So I can either click on it here to hit explore, but I'm just going to click on the set that they've included. I can see, oh, the first set only had, you know, four sheets on it. This set has seven sheets and a 3D model for me to review that they've kind of set up for me to view. So again, now I have access and can look at the model in the cloud environment without downloading it, without using Revit, a project manager could log in using just a docs license or using the design license here and see these changes like that. And see, you know, even come in and, you know, hide that selected item because I want to see inside. I'm the MVP engineer, so maybe I care about the HVAC work that's been done here. It's great. I can see all that. And of course, I can right click and turn everything back on. Now, the most important part here, or the most powerful tool, is not only can I visually look and see what they've released, if I want, I can use this tool here called Show Changes. So I want to see changes between 50% submission and the 75% submission. So now right here in this Revit model, I was instantly able to determine that there are 21 added items, seven items that have been removed, and 26 items that have been modified. So let's first look at what has been removed from the model. So I can see right here that, that shelf unit was removed and this refrigeration unit, and these shelves have been removed here, and these shelves have been removed. So now I see everything has essentially been removed from the model. Okay, show me things that were added. Okay. So what was added to the model here? Oh, I see that they've added a shelf here. I've also seen that they've added some walls in the back area here, and they've also added some more refrigeration units or refrigeration freezer space here. Oh, and there's also uh, another room over here that's been added. Great. So now I see those changes. I want to know what was simply modified. So I can come in here and see the modifications. So I can see different objects that were changed, whether they be volumetrically or rotated or whatever. I can pick on those individual objects and I can get information as to what those changes was. So in this case, I saw that it was moved. So I can tell that, that object was basically moved from one location to another. If I pick this wall right here, I can see that it was rotated 180 degrees. So I have full knowledge of everything that's basically been done in this model. And I also have the ability to export all those changes as a CSV file, including the Revit ID number and all the information, the parameters that were changed, everything that was done to that object is recorded and sent out in that Excel document. If I want, I could go into the 3D view instead. Sometimes it's easier to see those things in 3D. And I can see the things that were removed, added from the view and such. If I want, and again, I can switch that to just the modified elements, and I'll zoom in down here and kind of look at this door and select that again as one of the modified elements. I can even see where it was and where it was moved to. Or if I pick any of these other objects here, I can rotate this, and let's take a look at the shelf unit here. Oh, it was rotated 90 degrees, so that was what the change was to that one. The nice thing, of course, about the 3D view is that it becomes very easy to really visualize where these things were. 
So if I turn off the modify, these are just my added elements. So I see that now. So again, it makes it very easy to identify where the problem might be or think areas that I need to think about as the MEP engineer. These are going to relate to me. Uh, on some of these units require and plumbing because they're freezer units and require drainage and um, refrigeration line and such. And now that affects me. Oh, this is another room here. I have to think about how do I heat and cool that room? Does it require that? Is a refrigeration unit I got to accommodate that? So these are all things I need to know as an MEP engineer. So again, very powerful tool. And once you've kind of reviewed the changes, you can then consume it. And when you do that, then your background and your Revit MEP model will then update. The architectural background will update. So this becomes a really invaluable tool for the entire team to basically see all the submittals, when people have shared things, whether they've been consumed. So I get a very high level view of every object and what every team is doing, what models they've released, if they've consumed things or not. I have access to all of that data. So it becomes a really highly powerful collaboration tool, yet it gives everyone their own control, which is also very important in this process. So nothing is changing without anyone knowing about it. And that's probably one of the things that I like the most about it is that ability here. But again, also, the fact that when I'm in this environment, I don't have to really work any differently. It's all kind of working the way I've always worked, except I'm not manually getting the model all the time. Um, it's just going to be there. Someone who's in charge of it on my team is going to decide when the background model will update, consume it, and the background will just update. And if I want, I could go to the portal and look at the differences. And now that I know that, oh, well, this electrical closet is new, do I have to do anything to that? Or maybe that's something I asked for. The code requirement was that the electrical panels were in an enclosed environment to protect them. Oh, good, so that the architect has followed my advice and added that electrical room that I needed. And then they said, oh, we also needed another storage room over here, but it doesn't need any type of um, heating or cooling. It's just a storage closet. So good, so that doesn't affect me like the other part does. And then maybe there was a shaft I needed right here as well for um, heating and, or cooking equipment and such and venting. So now I have a nice collaborative environment. I can share all my models, but only the models that I am ready to share with the extended team, and they can see when I share those things. And now that I've shared that information with the team and I've created these packages, the latest package will always show up in what we call the shared folder, which is called the shared folder in the web portal here. So if I go to design collaboration here, or just say document management now, Maybe I have other people in the project. They're not Revit users. They are the project managers, the principals, even an owner if you want to give them access. So you, the person who's hosting the project has create and given access or docs licenses to other individuals who are not going to participate in the Revit editing and management, but are going to be managing the project and need to be able to review and comment on the drawings to the extended team. So in the shared folder here, I can give certain individuals read or read rights to this so that they can see the drawings, add issues and such, and add comments. So now if someone needs to communicate with the team as a whole, maybe the architect has a question or the MEP engineer has a question about something. So the MEP engineer who is, has a docs license can go into the shared architectural team folder and they can see the latest, the last shared package that the architect has shared with the team. So they can come in here, maybe they want to go to the first floor, and maybe they have, or actually let's go to the reflective ceiling plan, for instance. And maybe they had a question where, hey, we need a light here. So we need a light fixture in that location, so they mark that up. And then maybe over here, you could say, hey, maybe there's too many lights in this room. So what they're going to do right now is they're asking the architect, I'm going to create an issue. So I'm going to create an issue. I'm going to put an issue marker right here in this room. It's a design issue. And what's the subtype is this issue? Is it still design, requirement change? You know, so maybe I'm just going to say it's a requirement change. And the issue is open and say we only need one you know light here by code two is overkill trying to save some money okay well who am i asking this question 
anyone at the architectural firm or just a specific person. Maybe I'm just going to talk to the project manager at the architectural firm. And I really need an answer by Tuesday of next week. And where is the location here? So I can say, oh, well, because we've established locations here so that we have common locations. I can ask, tell the person, you know, where is that information? Is it in the pharmacy? Right here, it's in the pharmacy. And what's the root cause of this problem right here? And it may not be necessarily a negative. You know, maybe it's just a code compliance. Hey, we have, we're over code here. We don't need two lights. And you say, we only need, right here, this is a description. Need one light fixture in this room. Two would be too bright. So I give my nice little description of my issue here, very detailed information, whatever I basically need. And I hit the Create button. The second I hit the Create button, the issue is created. That person that I've assigned that issue to was immediately notified by email with a link to the issue where they just simply click on it and it will take them directly into this issue right here. And then they'll be able to see that it's associated with the drawing. They'll be able to open the drawing and it would, again, take them right to the drawing and right to this issue. Now, while I'm here, I want to elaborate a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a markup here. So I'm going to create a markup. I'm going to change my pen weight to maybe that thickness for now, see if that's good. I'm going to put a bubble around this area here because that's the, where I want that change. Then I can go ahead and say, okay, let me just go ahead and use this tool here to indicate. Oh, let me just delete that actually. By mistake, there we go. Notice I can even click because this is Revit. It actually lets me snap points too, which is nice. So that's where I want the light picture. And I'll just put a little arrow right here. And yeah, the arrow's kind of big, so let me go ahead and change that to a smaller one. There we go, that's better. And let me add some text in here, and I'll use a smaller font. And we say need only one light. So now I've basically taken my redlining process here from the 16th century pencils and moved it into the 21st century electronic. And I can even make that background opaque so it's not opaque, so it's not blocking out the geometry. And just like M text and AutoCAD, you might, if I needed to, I could you know, stretch that box over and whatever, you know, control this, how many lines or whatever I'm using there. But I'm just going to leave this as one here. So now this red line right here is just mine. I'm the only one that can see it. So I can have a whole set of personal markups, but now I want this to be shared with the team. So I can come in here and change it from private to published. And when I hit done, anyone on the team is gonna be able to see this. So in the morning, a manager might go in and let's take a look at all the issues that are due next week or whatever. Here are all the issues on every document everywhere in the project. Oh, there's an open issue here. We only need one light fixture. I should take a look at that. Okay, so we only need one fixture here in this room, too, would be too bright. All right, well, oh, here's the drawing. Let me just look at that. So it'll go ahead and just take me to the drawing. I didn't have to know where it was. It just takes me right to it. Opens up the drawing at that area. Will pull me into that piece of information. So that's basically the drawing file. Again, I can go into the, the issues here for the project, and I can see, you know, there it is. You know, only need one light here by code. So there's the light fiction. There's the code. There's the issue right there. I can come in here, and if I'm in the field, maybe this is something that was already done. I could have it fixed and then take photos of it and have my iPad app open and take a photo of that issue right now and add it in. And I could just go, even right now, go to attachments, maybe have a file that's on my computer and just want to attach that file. Or I could hit browse here and maybe I've already taken the fold in the photo and thrown it into the project photos folder here. And maybe there's some photos in there I want to add in. I just want a photo in there at the moment. Or like I said, if I have my iPad, I could take a photo right there and then upload it and attach it to this document or even a spec document or anything else I want to attach to this. And then I could mark that issue as answered, put in what the answer is. So it was assigned to me, and I could at this point, depending on what my permissions are, assign it to someone else at my company. But said all set. 
and we changed it. And done. So now that's been answered. Now I will see that will be answered. I can see, go in and review this. Say, oh yeah, good, that's been answered. I could then set it to close and approve it and maybe, maybe add some notes as needed, but I'm gonna leave that open for now. Or I could even change it, oh no, that's not right, uh, and I'll change it back to open, which I could also do, of course. And then if I want to make sure that the red line's been kind of picked up and kind of using the old fashioned way here, the way I used to do it when I was working in the field. So I could go to that drawing, I could hit edit, and then I could use my little highlighter here and just like the good old days, let me just go ahead and highlight that area because I've completed it. So now I know that that markup has been dealt with. And the issue is blue, so I know it's been answered. So now I can look at a drawing and see, oh, well, that's unnecessary even to look at. It's been done because it's, it's a closed issue or answered issue. I can also see this markup is here, but there's not been an, uh, an issue associated with it. But again, I can also quickly get to any markups on any versions of this file. So right here, you know, some of these markups are on different versions as well. They're not all on the same sheet, or this is on the first floor plan as opposed to the RCP and such. So as you can see here, I can move these around. I can switch to different pages, pick different red lines. It's very easy to navigate the set. Here are all the issues here. So on this folder, I can see all the issues in this folder, so I can quickly get to those issues just by coming over here and going to them. And so on here, this just in case the door needed to swing a different way. I can see who it was assigned to. I can even take that master issue list that we're looking at here and export it as a PDF report or a CSV report as well. So now I've taken and extended the collaboration not only to the people just using Revit, I've now fully incorporated in the project managers, the non-Revit users that no longer have to come to me for any questions they have about the plans because they simply need to go into the web portal here and pull the information out as needed or create their own issues and or questions. They can redline the set, not ask you to print it and give it to them for review. And then there are further things here that, I, that you could go into where if you're in this, the, where you've moved the file into a set over here or anywhere for that matter, but maybe you've moved the Revit model into a set here. And now the fifth drawing is ready for review. I can select that drawing and submit for review. And I'm gonna use my final construction documents approval process. So action upon completion, once this has been approved, it's gonna be then you know, copied or moved, copied into the approved construction documents folder. So right now I'm gonna su submit this to the first reviewer. I have a three-step review assigned to this, as you can see, one, two, three steps for review. So I would submit that. So it's gonna be sent out to the reviewers. I only have a couple of people set up to be a reviewer. I could also just put an FYI, so the other members, hey, just be aware that you, know, you don't have to do anything here just be aware that I'm sending this out. And then a message, whatever that message may, may be, just review, please. And I send that out. That person now gets an email. They can click on the link in the email. Simply anyone can, who has permission can go into the issue, sorry, the reviews folder. See, oh, there's an open review. Oh, I'm assigned to that. Great, so I'll go in. Okay, let me, there's the drawing. I can open it now and mark it up or do whatever if I have questions. So I can come in here, you can see I can mark it up, whatever. And then I'm gonna take that and start the review. Add some comments, looks okay. Submit review. Automatically goes to the next person. Right here, this is the next person that's supposed to be notified. Again, I can notify more people, I'm not gonna bother. Or I could even skip this, hey, this is, I don't need to review that. Then I can, again, start this review, go through that, that's fine, submit the review, no comment, submit. And I keep going through that process. Now we're in for the final review here. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and send that in and start the review for the final acceptance now. So now everyone's reviewed it, the person who originally submitted it says good, 
I can put in the final approval status as approval, rejected or approved as noted. So I'll say approved. And I could have multiple approvals here and then hit submit for review. So as soon as I've submitted that, or basically closed this, it will then automatically take that A5 file and copy it into the approved documents folder. If that's what you want it to do, you can set it so this approves it, leaves it in place, depending on what you want it to do. So maybe you don't want multiple copies around. You just want to approve it in place and leave it where it is, which would be a very valid workflow as well. So right now, this has been completed. If I went over to folders, I could then, of course, take a look at my approved folder right here. So this is the folder I created for my approved documents, and I've now included the fifth page A5 sheet to that. So that is now an approved status. You can see right here it's approved. These are approved as noted and also approved. If it was rejected, it would have been left where it was until those rejections were resolved. So that's a relatively new feature that was introduced just a few weeks ago to allow to create your own customization or review processes. Call them anything you want, and you can have between one and three people basically review those files, and you control who those people can be. So you're going to come in and say, hey, only certain individuals are allowed to participate in that process. So when I go to Project Admin here, I can then look at the Reviews option. And right here, I can look at this approval workflow that I've created and control what the policies are, what is approved, rejected, approved as noticed. I can change and change what that says. It doesn't have to say approved as noticed. Say, approved as reviewed or as remarked, whatever you want to call it. And you can pick the symbol you want to use. You can create your steps. Again, this is a, a two-step review or three-step and a final review. And again, when you're creating them, you have the option of having right here a one-step, two-step, or three-step approval. And then you can then name and create that review process and, and use it on demand, essentially. And then again, back into document management. So even document management by itself, not even talking about design, which is what we're talking about here, has really just been 360 Docs now, is available to just the Docs platform. And I can put anything up here. And even if I don't have BIM 360 design, and this is important to understand too, is that when I go into the shared folder here and I have access and I'm just using BIM 360 Docs and I want to take a look at the architectural model, I can go in here and I can open that model right here just by opening it. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and open the model. So I'm, again, a non-Revit user, but I still have the ability to use the change management tool here. And I want to compare, you know, maybe versions 1 and 2 here against version 1. And make sure that I'm looking at the, you know, the same view that is in each of these and compare. now a non-revit user still has the same powers that a design user is in the fact that they can go in at any time see the changes in the documents like I showed before. And in BIM 360 Docs, even if you upload a PDF file and you select the version here, I can compare versions of even PDF files and hit compare. So now I can see all the changes to the PDF document or even AutoCAD document between versions 2 and versions 3. So right here I see some changes. This is a PDF file, non-intelligent objects, yet I'm able to easily identify where the change was. So I see red is new, blue is existing or old. So I'm going to come in here and change my viewing mode now that I've identified the area to better understand what was changed. Oh, I see they've added an electrical closet. Well, over here, oh, oh, I see that they just moved the door. It was swinging this way. They swung it that way and moved it in a little bit so it didn't interfere with the other door. So those are the changes between those two versions. So I can go ahead and exit comparing here and compare any of the other drawings, view the markup upgrade issues, and so on. And you can see right here, this A4 drawing was actually approved already. So I can, again, I can approve things in place or when an approval is done, a copy can then be placed into another folder if that's what you want to do, or just have them approved here and not have them get copied. So these are just other tools that are available in the document management section or portion of this.